Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Dr. Teacher Mom. Today, I will share an interview with you. I was interviewed by Isabella and Gemma from Einstein Radio, an Italian school web radio. Enjoy. Uh, okay, can you introduce yourself please? Okay, so um, as you know, I have a YouTube channel Dr. Teacher Mom. I've been um, teaching for over 16 years and I teach secondary school, secondary school English, so from 11 to 18 years um, students. I have, I'm a mom of five, so I have five girls and I just had twins who are eight months. So yes, yeah, so I'm a girl mom <laughs> as well. Um, what else? What else? Is there anything else that I haven't answered that you'd like to know? Uh, where do you live? Oh, yes. In, I in live, general, not the... Yeah, I live in um, Birmingham in the United Kingdom. Uh, why did you create uh, your uh, YouTube channel? Okay, that's quite interesting. So I've wanted to have a YouTube channel for a while. And, you know, life got in the way. I had so much there's so many other things to do and then in the summer of 2018 um we were at home and the girls my girls my two eldest girls they started to talk about mom we could do a youtube channel and what could be the name of the youtube YouTube channel so when we got the names for their two youtube channels so my seven-year-old she has a youtube channel called the amazing world of stories and my no 10 year old has a YouTube channel called Amaze Artistic. So it started from there. So when I got their YouTube channel up and running, I then said, you know what? I need to do one for myself. So after seeing that I could do their YouTube channel, it was like almost as a trial run. And then I started my YouTube channel, which for me, it's fulfilling a purpose that I think I have a purpose to impart my knowledge to others, to try to inspire. And so that's how Dr. Teacher Mom came about. Um, why did you decide to make videos on English grammar? Okay, so as I said before, I'm a teacher. So that is my speciality, English teacher. So when i thought about what kind of youtube channel i was going to have it was yeah do what you love do what you've always wanted to do i've always wanted to teach from i was a small girl from was about five six i always said i want to be a teacher i want to be a teacher so after deciding on a youtube channel it, it just went on from there that yes i'm going to do my speciality i'm going to make videos about what i do teaching so i started putting on grammar and then um some of my students said miss why don't you do we want to hear more about maybe shakespeare so if you have a look, I have some videos on Shakespeare. I have some videos on the inspector calls because those are some of the major texts that we teach in the UK. So it leads on to the curriculum, the English curriculum from the UK. Uh, do you think it's important uh, to spell words well when you speak English? Yes, definitely. If you cannot um, spell, because the English curriculum is not only about speaking, for you to be fluent in English, you need to be able to spell, hence read, and spelling is really linked to reading. How well can you read is going to be linked to how well you can spell. So if you cannot spell in English, you're not fluent in the language, you're basically illiterate in English. And there are a lot of other languages where the, the speakers, they can speak it well, but they cannot read or write in that language and hence they're illiterate. And if you were supposed to, for example, take an English exam, and you're unable to spell and read, then part of the exam you will be unable to do. So yes, I think it's very important. Uh, why did you choose your nickname? I chose Dr. Teacher Mom because it is all those three parts. So the doctor, I am studying to be a doctor in education. So, so I'm doing my PhD right now. And then the mom, 
as I said before, I'm a mom of five girls, and that's really important to me in terms of my identity and um, the roles. You talk about, you know, what your roles are. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, I'm a teacher, hence doctor, teacher, mom. Um, do you consider your channel as a hobby or a second job? It is, that is a, a quite difficult question because it's a hobby in terms of what I like to do, but it's not a job because I'm doing this as part of what I think I need to, my contribution basically. How can I make a contribution? Uh, these videos, the whole point of the videos are to help um, people being be able students adults wherever you are in terms of a learn of english feeling like okay after my videos you're more confident you're more um comfortable with the language so it is not a job it's maybe a hobby because i love to do it but it's mainly linked to what i think my purpose is to inspire to lead to teach uh, does your family support you for uh, your uh, YouTube channel? Definitely. Um, as I said before, I started this YouTube channel before it was concept and it became a reality after I did my daughter's YouTube channels. And then my husband, sometimes he records to me. My brother, who has uh, an editing company, he edits... Uh, majority of my videos so you know every part of it family has really helped and been supportive of this yes uh, what being a mother means to you wow everything um you know when you think about you know some people have almost a godlike complex when they're a mother because you basically created um, a child, you know, God created the, the baby, the child in your womb, but you had to nurture and grow that child. And I've had the privilege to nurture and grow five wonderful girls. Um, being a mother is just so much. It's about how much I impart to these girls, how much I um, help them to be citizens of this world and having knowing that you know what they have a responsibility a responsibility to take care of the earth to be safe to recycle all of those things and not only that i'm a christian so imparting those christian values to them i believe that um these children were loaned to me by God. And as a result, I have to grow them up in the way he wants me to grow them up, my husband and I, to grow them up. So yes, being a parent and being a mother especially is such a great role because you have a huge accountability in later life. When they grow up, I want to ensure that they're such good citizens who have made an impact. So yeah, it means a lot. How this is this the current situation of the coronavirus is influencing your videos? Ah, you know that we're on quarantine. Um, the children are not um, at school. So basically we're on lockdown and everything right now is a focus on the internet. So, you know, that is our link to the world. Um, I haven't made a lot of videos since, um, COVID-19 because I have the children here. I have five girls to look after. So in terms of that, it has affected that because, you know, I'm at home focused on my role as a mom, but on a positive note, it has really ensured that the family are more together. We are spending 100% of our time together now. Um, it's not about, okay, going to school and me being at home because I'm currently on maternity leave. So, you know, before I had that time when I was at home to think about, okay, what am I doing with my day? But no, it's really focused on the family and that has been good in terms of having the children here and doing more activities with them that I would not maybe be able to do if we weren't on lockdown.
Uh, what is the situation uh, um, um, in the UK about the coronavirus? So we are all on lockdown. Um, you know, the slogan is stay at home as much as you can to stay safe. So only um, like health professionals are going out, carers. So basically key workers um, and all the um, key workers, they're the ones who are going out. Um, so majority of the UK, we're on lockdown, we're at home, we're doing a lot of our jobs remotely. So at home, working from home, um, we're only going out for like, maybe if you need to go to the doctors for emergency, or you need to go to go and get shopping, um, food shopping. So apart from that, on May the 7th, they're going to go back and look at it and decide if the lockdown will be extended or not. So that is the current situation right now. What bonds are uh, imposed on you by the state and uh, what happens if you don't respect them? Could you repeat that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what bans are imposed on you by the state and what happens if you don't respect them? Right. So, as I said before, we need to um, be on lockdown. Of course, it is being monitored. You know, are you going out? Um, and I think for the most part, the UK has abided by it because we understand that this is a really a really important thing to do if we're going to keep safe right now there is not a vaccine there is um there isn't anything that's going to prevent the covid-19 right now we know that vaccines are currently be, um they're trying to get a vaccine in um cambridge but currently we don't have anything to stop if you from stop anyone from getting it so yeah staying so staying home um being as safe as possible washing hands all of those requirements and i know i haven't heard anything if someone went out and um didn't abide by the rules what happened because as i said for the most part, I'm staying home and what I'm seeing in the news is everyone is abiding by this. Hopefully, the, the state won't have to impose any harsh, um, you know, any harsh rules because we are abiding and um, we're following the advice because we know that if we're going to keep our family safe and our friends and the world, the UK, on by and large we need to adhere to the rules so the, the situation is different from italy because we here you can't uh, go out if you're not have a, a auto certification and uh, if you go out and don't have it you get a ticket oh so no right now they've said to us we can go for exercise um you can so people it's not so basically suppose i wanted to go out three times a day and say I'm going for exercise. <laughs> Technically, I could because there isn't, you know, we're not getting tickets, we're not getting, that's not uh, being enforced yet because as I said, by and large, everyone is abiding by the rules. So, yeah, and that's good. How are you living in this quarantine and are you worried? Yes, to an extent, um, the, the worry is there, even though I'm not like focused on the worry of what is next. You know, I'm just going a day at a time. I think that would be my advice to anyone. You know, at this point, it has to be one day at a time. Go and see how it goes because to worry, you know, and if, you know, if I was to say I'm abiding by Christian principles, worry, why should we worry? You know, God has this and it is going to be um, resolved. And having that faith and trust in a bigger authority does keep me. So if, you know, I didn't have those Christian um, principles, yes, I would worry because there's not an, you, you, at this point, we're not seeing an end point. As I said, May the 7th, we're going to listen to what the advice is. 
and then see, go from there. But at this point, we don't know. I can't say to you tomorrow, this lockdown is going to be over and COVID, they would have, you know, re resolved the COVID situation. So right now it is uh, very uncertain. And the advice is even when lockdown is over, even when they have found a vaccine and they've, um, you know, dealt with COVID, life as we know it will not be the same because it's a lot to get back. We've lost months and months of productivity. There are a lot of small businesses that have had to be shut because of this. So, you know, there is a, it is like a recession. You know, we had a recession um, before. So right now, it is very uncertain times. And I would say to anyone, this is the time to hold firm on a higher um, authority and put your trust and faith in that higher authority. How has your routine changed to the, to the quarantine? How has my routine? Yes. Uh, changed? Well, yeah, because it's lockdown, so you can't go out, you know, for me, I haven't had, uh, before I could go to the gym or all of that. Now, luckily we have a garden, you know, a backyard too, so I can do laps there. But apart from that, I haven't been out really uh, for a month. So <laughs> before, you know, we'd go to church, we'd go out, we'd, we'd go to the parks, we'd go to the zoos, we would take the children out. And the children haven't been out for over a month as well. They've been in the backyard. But when I say go out, you know, what we normally do, like go to the museums, go to the zoos. So in terms of that, it's, it's me as a mom trying to comfort them and support them and allowing them to understand that it will be okay. We're not worried. It will be okay. And I think as adults and having children, that's one of the major roles that we have to appear calm and, you know, not as if we're stressed. So yes, routine as I have known it is no longer. It is, everything is really around the home and the internet. Um, yeah. What do you think of, uh, of Italy right now with this situation of COVID-19? Well, it is really sad because before um, Italy for me was, you know, that great architecture, wonderful weather, and it was a place to go to. You know, for us, we'd be like, okay, you know, it's the capital, it's the fashion capital, really. And we want to go there on holidays. And now, we, when you see the pictures that I've seen, there's, you know, it's isolation. You know, everything is shut down, no business. So for me, it's really sad. And the question is, after all of this, will it be the same or... Close to the same. What do you think? You're living it. So what do you think? At the beginning, it was um, uh, all the Italy, they underestimate that. Yeah, no, it's not. It's from China. And it's cannot be here. But then the number of contagion is uh, going up. A lot of people die. A lot of uh, uh, adult people die. So we shut down all, to, all uh, now, and uh, we are in quarantine since uh, February. The end of February. What? Yes. March. If that's a long time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So have they said that they will look back at it and change certain rules? They will see how it's going because I've heard that the death rate. Um, isn't going up, um, you know, it's, it stopped. So there's like a peak right now. Uh, before it was climbing and climbing and climbing, but now it's um, decrease is not as huge. So what were they saying now? Uh, now they, a few days ago, they announced uh, Second phase, second, uh, second, second program for the um, comportation on doing the well, COVID-19, but because they want to open the economy, the business, because uh, this quarantine is very damaging the 
economy of the pe of the yes. state. Yes. Yeah. There is a there is a lot of uh, money they are going to lose it. Yeah. Yes. So they try to open um, the factory, some uh, the job, and now we can um, go out to see all our relatives. It's a very confus confusing um, situation because no one can get very well what you we were, what we have to do or we can do what we can not not do. So it's very confusing. But uh, now it's getting a little better. Okay, so that's good. Better is always good. So is there anything else that you'd like to ask? Uh, no. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, Gemma and Isabella, it was just fantastic for you to, uh, for us to have this link. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that's one positive of COVID-19 because I think before this, maybe we wouldn't have had an interview on Zoom, so it's um, fantastic. And I will be putting this on my YouTube channel as well. Oh, so, if, yeah, yeah, so you can see on my YouTube channel as well. So, if you um, forward me the video, that would be fantastic. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, then, bye. And we'll chat on Instagram. Um, yeah, we'll chat on Instagram. Bye. Thank you so much for Bye. your time. Bye. Thanks. Bye.